Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Well, hello there. This is Gentile Joel. Along with uh, Heathen Kapler over there, uh, we're doing the Growing in Grace podcast at growingingrace.org. And no, it's not true. I'm no longer a Gentile or a heathen or a pagan <laughs> because uh, in Christ there is no Jew or Gentile or heathen or pagan. Uh, and the reason I'm starting off like this is because we're going to be talking, we're going to be using those words a little bit on this podcast. And as we get settled in here, I'm sure you will come to understand. So how is uh, my friend, Mr. Uh, Mike Kaplan doing? Looking forward to another podcast <laughs> here, Joel, talking about false assumptions. We've been doing this for a number of weeks, just uh, just kind of plucking some things out that people have uh, assumed to be true as it relates to the gospel, the Bible, God, any of that, and perhaps... There's a whole lot of stuff out there that we've been taught or heard and assumed certain things. But, you know, if we're going to, I made, I made the comment uh, a while back that uh, we need to be honest with ourselves. It's, it's time, you know, half the battle is just becoming honest with ourselves instead of trying to defend things that we've believed all of our life and, and try to claim what we believe is truth. Uh, let's search for the truth and then determine what our thought process will be. I think that's a bridge that you and I crossed many years ago, is that we just wanted to know the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Spirit reveals it to us, we, we just want to, we just sincerely want to seek that, even if it disagrees with our current ideology. And, and that's, I think, where we've always come from on this podcast and where we'll go from here, probably. Yeah, some, something you just said, uh, I thought it was, in, in my mind, this is where I went with it. You said we're we're plucking some things out, and and, and what you meant was we're, we're talking about various false assumptions. But I, one thing that we're doing in line with what you were just saying there <laughs> is that we are plucking things out of their out of context uses <laughs> that people have used them in. So we, <laughs> why I find this funny is because we will say that people, in order to come up with a lot of the these um, false assumptions, they will pluck things out, verses here and verses there. Yeah, Bible Bible verses. And in fact, I think we've even used that analogy on this series. Right, exactly. And and so we're plucking those things out, those false assumptions out of <laughs> various <laughs> settings and, and trying to put them in context. So we're plucking out, out of context, things that people have plucked out, out of context, and we're trying to put them in context to find That's out so <laughs> what the truth is. So would you like <laughs> three lumps or four um, with that? Yeah, I, I feel like Pete Puma. I'm confused. <laughs> or uh, Vinny Barbarino. I'm so confused. <laughs> that was my favorite one. Vinny, uh, Vinny Barbarino. No, Sweat Hogs. Uh, welcome back, Cotter. I don't know if we've brought out that one for a while, but. That was my one of my absolute favorites as a as a youngster. Yeah, I haven't seen that one for a long time. I, yeah. um, some shows are just hard to find on streaming. Yeah, they are. Uh, I, I taped a bunch on uh, video cassette uh, several years ago when there was a, a Welcome Back Cotter marathon, but they are pretty poor quality these days. But so video, back to did you say video cassette, video cassette, VCR. Yeah, that kind of brings <laughs> up the uh, the obsolete word. Uh, when we refer to the old covenant, but we don't even have a DVD player anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got one, but I don't think I've used it in in a long time, years, just because yeah. of all the streaming and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, Joel, this week Matthew eighteen, uh, you gave a little tease on it at the end of the last program last week, and it's it's a one of those verses or a verse or two that people will develop a, a complete mindset on that you were talking about plucking we pluck these bible verses out of context and then we we start building something around an assumption that may not be true and so let's see matthew 18 
Again, I say to you that if two of you ag agree on earth concerning anything that they will ask, it will be done for them. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And so a lot of different things inside of different churches will come from this. Uh, a lot of people think that it's talking about prayer. Um, and so we're going to back up on this here a little bit, back up in, in a little bit further as to some other things Jesus said here, and maybe even uh, past what Jesus said in this chapter, and try to put something together here as to who is he talking to and why is he saying the things that he says. And so let's get into that. Yeah, I think I think it's really important. When I think it's been several years that you first pointed this out to me, and I know how you have talked in the past about how when you began to see things from more of a grace mindset, uh, previous to that, there were just so many things that you were hearing in church circles that just weren't adding up, that the math wasn't adding up. And to me, when, when I used to hear where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them, there was something, there was something about that that didn't add up, knowing that in Christ, he dwells in us. Uh, he lives in us. It's not like we need to have two or three people in order for God to hear us, to hear a prayer, or to do anything for us. And so I would kind of just go along with this idea. This, this was my own personal, maybe, interpretation or understanding of this, that Okay, so great, you know, it's, it's, it's great when I'm on my own, but if I have two or three other, you know, if I'm gathered with two or three together, well, there, Christ is in the midst of us, because Christ is in all of us, the, the three of us who are gathered together, Christ is in us, if we're gathered together in his name, and so, yay, great, you know, there's, but I didn't really apply it, um, I didn't know how to really apply it, and so, where we're coming at from uh, in, in what we're talking about here, is that there's a context here that really doesn't even have to do with our lives in Christ anyway. <laughs> and uh, you're the one who, who, who pointed this out to me, and I, I think you can explain it a lot well, uh, a lot better than I can, um, although there is something else in this passage that I'd also like to point out too. So as far as the two or three, I'll, I'll pass it back to you, and we'll see where that goes. Yeah, and, and I know where you want to get involved here, so we'll get to that. Uh, I mean, earlier in the chapter, first of all, he's talking to his disciples. Again, w remember what we were just talking about with the Sermon on the Mount? He was also talking to his disciples. It was a law conversation, and this is very much like that. If you just kind of look at the whole thing in context here, you'll begin to see it if you understand what we were saying about the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, but he says, if your eye causes you to sin, verse 9 of 18, Matthew, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. <laughs> cast it from you. It's better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. So how many people do that <laughs> back, back then or now? Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. The Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. And he goes on to talk about this. If he had a hundred sheep and one goes astray, leaves the ninety-nine, uh, goes to the mountains to seek the one that is strain. And, and so he's, he's covering some of this. Um, even so, it is not the will of your father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. And he was talking early in the chapter about how they needed to become like a child to experience a conversion into a, a child, uh, a humility, so to speak. And then he says this, verse 16. Uh, let me go back one. Verse 15, moreover, and let me go to a different translation here. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you've gained a brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. That one. Now, this is, Jesus is being specific here for a reason. Take one or two others along with you. That every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Or, one translation says, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. What I just said there, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established, that is from the books of the law. Deuteronomy 19.15. Uh, by the, let, me, let me pull that up here. Deuteronomy 19.15. It's pretty much what I just said there. 
one witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits by the mouth of two or three witnesses the matter shall be established so this is law talk here again that that jesus is is covering if he will not hear you take with you one or two more um, then if he refuses to hear them tell it to the church we'll get into this church thing here in just a minute but if he refuses even to hear the church let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector or uh, the ESV says, let him, and, and a bunch of other translations say, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So we know he's not talking to Gentiles, non Jewish people here. Um, he's talking, he's having a conversation, and he's obviously bringing up the law in this thing. He's having a conversation with his Jewish uh, disciples. And then here comes the verses that get plucked. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, or here's that word. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So he's being specific here. Some, sometimes we think that Jesus is just generalizing. Well, two or three. And I'll bet, unlike Pete Puma, who was generalizing from Looney Tunes <laughs> when he said he wanted three or four lumps, uh, Jesus is being specific here. He didn't say more than two. And I'll bet in the past, Joel, I would say that. I'll bet I used to say where Jesus said where two or more are gathered in my name. How many times have you heard that Jesus didn't say that? He said, if, if two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Because he's referring to something specific, as I mentioned from Deuteronomy 19.15. And ultimately, this isn't about getting together for prayer. It's not about two or more. It's about two or three. And, and the issue here is conflict resolution. <laughs> Not right. praying for something with two or three people and getting everything that you ask for because there were two or three of you. Uh, by the way, if you're praying alone, God is still there in the midst of you. So exactly. this, this is a whole different <laughs> subject here. And and when he talks about the church here, Joel, I want to bring you in on this just to, to highlight this because a lot of people, when they hear the word church, a lot of different people will think a lot of different things. Yeah. No, it's true. Um so many places to go with this, but it's just, it's interesting, you know, that, that phrase two or more, I was talking with you beforehand. When we were back in Christian radio way back when, there was a band with the name two or more. <laughs> and and I, I don't know specifically why they came up with that name, but I can only assume that they came up with the I idea. And that's a, that could be a false assumption on my part, that they came, <laughs> they came up with the name of the band <laughs> based upon their understanding of this passage. That's neither here nor there. It really doesn't matter. But it just, when I hear the phrase two or more, I, I, which is not what Jesus said here, it just always reminds me of that band. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting here, the, the context. You know, what Jesus is saying in context. He's talking, like you say, to Jews, because he's saying that in, in this matter of working out things, you know, working out conflicts, this, that's really what this has to do with. And so you explained what Jesus is talking about here. And, and, and this, so this other thing that comes out of this is this word church in this passage. Uh, it's ekklesia in the Greek, the, the ekklesia. So uh, what he's saying, if your brother sins against you, you go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. If he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, that by the, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. You talked about that. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. And so today, these days, many people will read this, and the word church to so many people, means the body of Christ, the body of Christian believers. And so this passage is taken as something that Jesus is telling to the body of Christ, those who have believed in him. But you see, the Christian church was not yet even established at this time. So the word ecclesia, that is often translated as church. Now, if you listen to our good friend Mike Adams on the Unsunday show, he talks a lot about this. Uh, how the word church is really not a good translation of the word ecclesia. The word ecclesia 
is means a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some into some public place or an assembly. Really, what that word ecclesia means is it's an assembly. It's when people are assembled together, and so the assembly that Jesus is talking about here is the Jewish assembly. In the context, it's he's talking to Jews who are under the law. And if there's this conflict, go, go tell, you know, if someone sins against you, tell him his fault between you and him. If he hears you, great. You gained your brother, enough said. Again, in the context of Jewish fellowship under the law. But if he will not hear out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, may every word be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the ecclesia, the Jewish gathering the people who were under the law together. But if he refuses to hear the church, the ecclesia, the Jewish gathering of people, let him be to you like a Gentile. I know the King James says heathen. English Standard and New American say uh, Gentile. The New International Version says pagan. But either way, it's the same word. Let him to be be to you like a Gentile and a tax collector. So we know that Jesus is not talking about the Christian church. He's talking uh, about Jews, and if they will not resolve this conflict, let them, let this person, if, if he won't hear the body of Jewish believers together, let him to be to you like a Gentile uh, and a tax collector. It's when you look at this, when you see things put together like this in, in the context it's, it's, I think it's a lot easier to see what Jesus was talking about, that this is not a Christian passage. This is not a, a passage for believers in Christ. This was something that Jesus was telling specifically to those who were under the law. That's really the point we want to make about this, and we're uh, really running out of time for this. And if you have anything you want to end up with, Cap? Yeah, I, I hate to stretch this out, Joel, but let me try. Um, this thing that you just mentioned about Gentile, the, the same thing happened during the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, mm -hmm. We knew that he was having a conversation with his Jewish disciples, and it re related to law-based things. He, even leading into the, the the Lord's Prayer, he said, don't, don't be like the Gentiles who repeat the same things over and over <laughs> again. And guess what we've done with that prayer? <laughs> the very thing Jesus said <laughs> yes, not to do. Exactly. I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up, but it's happening. And then people get upset and, and call you a heretic when, when you try to bring it up. But then let me wrap up with this, uh, because after Jesus said all this, Peter came to him afterward and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. And then we, we're familiar with this where Jesus said, I do not say seven, but uh, 70 times seven. And, and then he goes on into this parable, which we won't read. You can read it for yourself there at the end of Matthew 18, but it's a pretty long one. And it's a Jewish law based parable. And, and let me just wrap up the last two verses here in Matthew 18. And this is the end of the parable. He says, his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Now, people who don't understand uh, the difference between the covenants are going to get uh, afraid after reading a parable like that. Jesus said this at the end of Matthew 18. So my heavenly father will also do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother, his trespasses. That relates to something he said back on the Sermon on the Mount. And that was for them at that time. We now know based on what Paul's writings explain to us is that we don't forgive to be forgiven by God, but because we've been forgiven by God through the blood of Jesus Christ, we now forgive others. It's a completely inside out scenario compared to what most people are thinking about when it comes to the church teaching out of context, like what the passage is this. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.